Okay, the next uh, couple of videos should actually be sort of viewed together. Um, I'm breaking them into two because it's going to be a little bit long and also the second part is pretty difficult so I just want to sort of break things into smaller pieces or students usually find the ideas in the second part very difficult but they're related to this video here. So this is just a generic uh, pretend chart that shows the amount of time that's gone by and the concentration of some reactant in a chemical reaction. And remember reactants are sort of the things that you start with on the left side of the arrow in your chemical reaction. So this is just some completely made up chemical reaction. I have I need to take molecules A and D and mix them together and somehow they bang into each other and they turn into molecule E. So you know, imagine that you have a test tube it's filled with a bunch of A and D molecules and you know, if you wait a little while some of those get converted into E's. Um, and in the setup of this pretend story, pretend that we start with a test tube that's filled completely with A's and D's. There are no E's at all. So we're in this situation here. And the concentration, we can pick either one, concentration of A or concentration of D. Let's say that we're looking at the concentration of A. And we can measure what the concentration of A is at different times. At the very beginning, at no time has gone by, zero seconds, let's say, the concentration of A is pretty high. It doesn't really matter what it is, but it's up here. And as time goes by, the A's and D's start to get converted into E's, so the A's and D's start to disappear. So the concentration of A is going to go down as time goes by. Um, and you can measure the speed of A disappearing. You can measure the speed of A disappearing at different times. And if you measure the speed of A disappearing at the very beginning, that's over here, the way that you can do it is you can measure the basically how steep this line is here. And this line is pretty steep compared to the others. So at the very beginning, the rate of disappearing of A disappearing is pretty steep. After a little while, the rate of A disappearing is not as steep as it used to be. A little while longer, the rate of A disappearing, it's still disappearing, but the, the slope or the steepness of that line is not as much. So the question is, or there's a bunch of questions up here, what does the red line mean? Well, that's the rate of a disappearing at the very beginning. What does the blue line mean? That's the rate of A disappearing a little while later. What does the green line mean? Well, that's the rate of C disappearing even later than that. So the question I will put to you is as time goes by, does the reaction speed up or slow down? In other words, is A disappearing faster over here or is it disappearing slower over here? You can pause the video and think about that for a second. If you unpause the video, the answer is that the reaction is slowing down as time goes by. So the, the steepness, you remember, is basically the steepness of these lines is the speed of the reaction. And over here, it's very steep, so the reaction is happening very fast. That means A is disappearing very fast. Over here, it's not as steep, so that means A is disappearing not quite as fast as it used to be. Then over here, uh, a, it's, it's even less steep, the slope of this line, so A is disappearing uh, more slowly than it was in the, in the earlier times. So as the reaction continues on, the speed of the reaction is slowing down. Now, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, one, one way of thinking about this is that when the concentration is high, in other words, when we're way up here at the beginning of the reaction, the A's and D's are crowded together and the A's and D's need to bump into each other in order to turn into whatever they're going to turn into, in order to turn into E. And if they're really crowded, it, crowded together, they're more likely to bump into each other. But as time goes by, they start to disappear, right? They're already turning into E's. So the chances of them bumping into each other over here where the concentration is lower, there's less of a chance that they're going to bump into each other, and that means that E is not going to form quite as fast as it used to. And then over here, there's even less lower concentration of A's and D's, 
because we already converted some of them to E's. And so they're, the A's and D's that are left over, they're even less likely to bump into each other. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna turn into E's as fast as they used to. So again, that's just a way of saying the reaction is slowing down as time goes by. And this is a pretty standard thing that happens in a lot of chemical reactions. So the punchline here is that the speed of the reaction, it depends on how concentrated the, the reactants are. In other words, in, in our pretend story is A plus D turned into E. Well, how fast this reaction takes place depends on how concentrated these things are. Um, if they're really concentrated, then the reaction goes faster. If they're not as concentrated, the reaction goes slower. The question that we're going to address in the next video, though, is how much does the reaction speed depend on the concentration? And there's a fair amount of math that you can do that's related to the speed of a reaction, which I'm calling the rate of the reaction, and how it's related to the concentration of the reactants that you're mixing together. And that's what the next video is going to be about. So see you in the next video. Oh, oh.